Hello and welcome back to the Gemma Movie Recap. In this video, we will tell the storyline of an action movie titled Crow Zero, the first season. This film focuses on power struggles among student gangs in a specialized all-boys school named Suzerain. As this film contains many dangerous fighting scenes, I hope you won't imitate any of the dangerous scenes from this movie. Before we delve into the storyline, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Without further ado, let's get straight to the plot. But before we start, please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. The film begins by showing a student named Tekiya Genji on a school rooftop. He's a transfer student with an ambition to become the best in Suzerain school. In another location, we see the orientation for new students taking place in a school auditorium. From this scene, we can already imagine what this school is really like, with walls covered in graffiti and students who show no respect whatsoever in front of their teachers. And of course, the culmination of that celebration is a brawl between the gangs of that year. Then, Suzerain School is visited by a few Yakuza, who claim to be looking for a student named Tama Surizawa to avenge what happened to their member. However, suddenly, Genji passes through that place very arrogantly. The Yakuza mistake Genji for Surizawa. There, Genji shows a glimpse of his ability and easily defeats the Yakuza. In another location, we are introduced to Tamo Surizawa, someone known as the ruler of Suzerain School. Here he is seen daringly riding a motorcycle, even though it's known that he has never ridden one before. Naturally, he ends up being pursued by the police due to his actions. Various events occur during this chase. Afterward, Surizawa suddenly arrives where Genji is, and that marks the beginning of the encounter between Genji and Surizawa. Even though, in the end, Surizawa is captured by a group of police due to his daring actions, the story then shifts to show Genji meeting a girl named Aizawa Ruka. Ruka is a singer at a nightclub. After that, Genji returns home. It's revealed that he's the child of a Yakuza leader, which is the reason why Genji is so ambitious to dominate Suzerain school. He wants to attain his father's current position. The next day, on a rooftop at Suzerain school, Surizawa and his gang are having discussions and playing together. However, Genji suddenly arrives and disrupts their game. His arrival is meant to directly challenge Surizawa, but he's given a condition. He must defeat all the strongest students in the second year class first and gather a substantial number of followers. One of the strongest he has to defeat is someone named Rindaman. Following that, we see the gang called the Mikami brothers challenging Surizawa's gang. This is where we witness the abilities of the number one fighter in Suzerain school. And indeed, with just a few punches, all members of the Mikami brothers are defeated by Surizawa. The scene then shifts to show Genji meeting with the Yakuza members who were defeated by him at the beginning of the film. Named Ken Katajiri, the intention for revenge turns into a bond between them. Here, Katajiri states that he will assist Genji in becoming the ruler of Suzerain school. Following Katajiri's advice, Genji starts building his own faction called Genji Perfect Sia or GPS. He begins defeating several gang leaders to gather more followers. The first gang leader to join GPS is a student named Tenmora Chuda. Here it means that all of Chuda's followers have now become Genji's followers. They discuss their next targets once again. There are several gangs that need to be defeated, including the Front of Armament, a fierce motorcycle gang, the Ibazuka Junior High Trio, who are dominant first-year students, and then Rindaman. Additionally, there's Tamao Surazawa and other members who are part of the Surazawa Army Gang. And finally, there's a student named Takashi Makis along with his gang. He's a second-year student who also has a few followers. Interestingly, he has been defeated by Surizawa multiple times, but he always refuses to join the Surizawa gang. This loyalty despite defeat is what keeps his followers devoted to him. These are some of the gangs or individuals that Genji needs to conquer if he wants to become the ruler of Suzerain. They start with Mekais. The way to defeat Mekais seems to be quite unique. Instead of using violence or confrontation, they plan to use the help of women. It's known that Mekais is quite weak when it comes to dealing with women. Genji and the others arrange a romantic meeting between Makis and several attractive women with the assistance of Ruka. Although the date ultimately fails, Makis is still charmed and eventually joins GPS. With this, GPS continues to grow even more significantly. On the other hand, Surizawa, upon hearing the news of Makis joining, feels a bit annoyed. 
After all, he has defeated Maquis multiple times, but he keeps refusing to join Sarazola's gang. Elsewhere, Genji is seen approaching a student named Izaki. In reality, Genji has been tricked. Izaki had requested a meeting with Genji under the pretense that he and his followers wanted to join GPS. However, the reality is that Genji ends up being brutally attacked by all of Izaki's forces. Unbeknownst to Genji, Azaki is actually a follower of Makis, which also means he's a follower of Genji. But here, he just wanted to see Genji's leadership skills and abilities. And true to form, even though he's beaten down repeatedly, Genji keeps getting up and refuses to give in. After that incident, GPS is officially announced as the gang's name under Genji's leadership, with a simple celebration to help members get to know each other. After the event, Azaki is attacked by Tokaji's men, who are members of Surizawa's gang. However, this attack is carried out secretly without Surizawa's knowledge. Izaki is left beaten and in a precarious position. Seeing this, Genji becomes furious and intends to retaliate against Surizawa's gang. However, Mikase and Izaki stop him because they are outnumbered by Surizawa's members. Following this event, Genji and Mikase eventually go to a bar. Unintentionally, they encounter Surizawa and Tokyo there. And in his immense anger, Genji immediately attacks Tokyo. However, he is stopped by Surizawa. This further infuriates Genji, and he challenges Surizawa to a duel. Tokyo doesn't let that happen. He restrains them and suddenly starts convulsing, then collapses. It's later revealed that Tokyo suffers from a dangerous brain illness. The following day, Genji arrives at school in a chaotic state. He attacks every student he sees and forces them to join his gang. He's eventually halted by Mekais. However, Genji continues to do whatever he wants. After this, one of the GPS members arrives and informs them that Chuda has been attacked by another gang. This naturally escalates Genji's anger, and he wants to attack immediately. However, once again, his intention is opposed by Mikais. Elsewhere, Katajuri is seen discussing something serious with his boss. He's given a mission to kill Genji. This is because Genji is the child of his boss's rival. The boss aims to incite a battle and gain even more power in the future. Katajuri eventually goes to meet Genji at a pier. There he feels hesitant and conflicted about killing Genji. However, in the end, he abandons his intention because he sees Genji as his friend. On that same night, Ruka, who is on her way home, is surrounded by several mysterious individuals and is immediately abducted. Ruka and her friend are kidnapped and held captive in a location. Ruka manages to use her phone to call Genji. She informs him that she has been kidnapped by a group of people wearing leather jackets with a symbol on the back. Genji and the other GPS members rush to the gang's headquarters. Without hesitation, GPS, led by Genji, launches a blind and ferocious attack on the armament gang. After a while, Genji realizes that there is no symbol or emblem on the jackets of the Armand gang, which means he was manipulated by someone. The leader of the Armand gang then asks the GPS group to apologize for the attack. It turned out to be the ear of one of the GPS members, Mikais. However, Genji immediately offers both of his ears to be sacrificed. As Genji is about to cut his own ear, Bando stops him and reveals the location where Ruka and her friend are being held captive. Without wasting any time, Genji and the other GPS members rush to that location. Eventually, it's revealed that Tokaji is the one behind the kidnapping. Upon learning this, Sarizawa becomes extremely angry with Tokaji for resorting to deceit in the name of the gang, tarnishing their gang's reputation. Because of this, GPS issues a challenge in the form of a brawl in front of Suzerain's school for the next day. The next day, both gangs finally gather on the school field. Sarizawa's gang has 100 members, while GPS has only 70 members. It's clear that GPS is outnumbered when compared to Sarizawa's gang. However, GPS doesn't give up and continues to move forward. Amid heavy rain, the brawl finally takes place. At the same time, Tokyo undergoes surgery for his illness, and Katajuri faces execution for refusing to carry out his boss's order to kill Genji. Returning to the two gangs that are now ready to fight, the battle finally begins, 
Initially, Sarizawa's gang seems to have the upper hand against GPS. Apart from being outnumbered, the GPS members are generally considered weaker students. Suddenly, the armament gang arrives and sides with GPS. This is where the GPS gang finally rallies and continues to fight. With the assistance of the armament gang, the battle between the two gangs becomes more balanced. Now, they are no longer outnumbered by Sarizawa's gang. Eventually, the fight comes down to two fighters and the leaders of each gang, Surizawa against Genji. They continue to exchange blows. Initially, everyone believes that Genji will lose, considering he's a beginner fighter and his body is covered in more wounds than Surizawa's. However, Genji turns the tide and manages to defeat Surizawa due to his unwavering determination. Genji ultimately emerges as the winner of the battle. Alongside this, Tokyo eventually undergoes a successful operation, and Katajiri manages to survive the execution. The film concludes with a battle between Genji and Randomin, who will emerge as the winner between them. And the film ends. Curious about the next season of the film? So don't forget to leave as many comments as possible if you want the next season's storyline to be created. Hopefully, you've understood the storyline, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.